So for that question again, if you plug in the natural log of the concentrations of all of these right here, and by the way, in your, in your calculator, you can actually just type in, in under L1, you put in all these, these right here, these are the times, and then under L2, you just go natural log 1. And just punch in natural log 1, and when you put your down arrow, and you, you go to the next one down in your list, it does that calculation for you automatically. You don't have to do it ahead of time, so that's cool. So now, you, when you graph that, you will get a straight line. Oh, well, not this one. This one here. You're going to get a straight line relationship for the natural log of the concentration of N2O5 versus time. It is a first order reaction. Somebody says, write the rate law. The rate law is the differential one. You write that down, you put a one there. That's it. Somebody says, what's the integrated rate law? You say, well, the integrated rate law is this, where that concentration generically would be A, but for this one it's N2O5. So the natural log of the concentration of the N2O5 equals negative KT plus natural log of the concentration of the N2O5. That zero means initially. So that equation was obeyed as a straight line relationship when we plugged it in, and so therefore we have a first order reaction for the integrated and the, for the rate law right here. Now somebody says, well, what's the K value? We can't use this formula here because you're not given a rate in this question to be able to plug into. You have to use this integrated formula. There's two ways to do it for this question. There's an easy way. Take a look. If we know that this is the equation, then can you take the natural log of the concentration of, of this chemical here at any given time. So what you could do, you could just plug in. If this, if this actually, well, we should do this uh, uh, for every one of these. Uh, you should calculate the rate constant k for every one of these and then average them. But like I said before, I ain't gonna do that. So guess what you can do? Can you take that natural log of 0.71, put it there, and that time that corresponds to it, 50 seconds, and put it there. And then what is the natural log of the initial, con that's at time zero. So at time zero, you had the natural log of 1. You put that into there. You can rearrange to solve for k. Now, by the way, it's going to be negative k equals when you rearrange everything, right? Because there's a negative in front of that k. And that's because the slope here is going to be a negative slope. It's going to go down. But don't let k be a negative number. Get rid of the negative in front of the k by multiplying each side of your equation by negative 1. So k is always going to be a positive number. The rate constant is always a positive number. And what you're going to get here when you manipulate that formula is the rate constant k and because this is in moles per liter and seconds and this is first order the unit for the rate constant is going to be one over seconds Now, what if though you weren't given an initial time to be able to to have an initial concentration to input into here how do you actually solve for k well you know what the easiest way to do it, if you have your scientific calculator, is remember that the k here, y equals mx plus b. m, which is k, is the slope of the line. So actually what you do is you go to your linear regression function in your, in your um, um, calculator, and when you look at line reg and you go enter, what it's going to do is it's going to give you the slope of the line that you just graphed. And so, that linear regression, which is the slope of that line, is going to be a negative number. So you make it, because it's a negative number, it's a negative slope, you make it a positive, and that's your numerical value for your rate constant. So that was easy.